everyone, welcome to the Outdoorsman channel. Today we're going to talk about a system for dual battery charging for your truck. Uh, there are many um, aftermarket systems that you can buy for installing a dual battery on your truck, which, which have battery isolators, uh, heavy contactors, and uh, big gauge cables and so forth. This is not one of those. This is purely to keep the extra battery charged in the event that you need it. Say you're stuck on a um, back road somewhere and your battery goes dead, you left something in your cigarette lighter and uh, your battery went dead. This will allow you to have a second battery fresh and ready to go with the use of jumper cables to take the auxiliary battery and start your vehicle from the auxiliary battery. So these, this is the main battery that came with the vehicle and starting at the battery terminal, I got a ring lug on the fuse assembly. There's an M6 nut which I just put on to the existing battery terminal. I wound up just making a little notch in this plastic case. This connects to the fuse. I use a barrel connector to attach these two together. And I put some heat shrink on it too. And anyway, this fits down into here. Like that. This goes in a little notch, more or less. This goes on there. And um, fuse just stays down in there, and then the cable runs across. And, you know, with this truck, there was a tray for an extra battery, and I happened to have an extra battery, so I said, "Why not?" So down in there, there's a, a keeper to hold the battery down. Make sure you secure your battery. You don't want it to be not secure. Um, there's some lugs on the battery, and this is a heavy-duty cable. I went over and there's a convenient point right there in the Silverado to connect that to a ground point right there. So that worked out pretty well. And then this is the assembly that you just saw being fabricated on the neat positive terminal. Charging current comes in through this small white wire and it goes and charges the battery. So the purpose of this is just to keep this battery charged when you're driving it around. It is not your classic dual battery system. Um, batteries tend to self-discharge with time and you want to keep it charged in case you need it. Then use your jumper cables if you need to to use this battery to charge your car like if your battery goes dead for some reason. Anyway most of this stuff I had so I figured what the heck. You do not want to just take a battery like this and put it in parallel with the main battery. Unless you really know what you're doing, a lot of bad things can happen if you try to do that. Do not do that. You could have a fire, explosion, lots of bad things can happen. So you, the kits that you buy <laughs> aftermarket have the necessary equipment to do that and cables and fuses and so forth. But they, they do cost over $100 and they take some time to put in and this is really inexpensive and cheap to do. So um, next I'm going to show you a test where I actually start the vehicle and see how much current comes through this wire into, into the auxiliary battery. Yeah, I want to touch a little bit about the circuit that we're using for this charger. So this is a diagram or schematic of the circuit. Um, we have a main battery. This would be your vehicle battery, which is here. And then we go over to a fuse. Very important to have a fuse. In this case, we're going to use about a 10 amp fuse. And then we're going to go to a length of wire. Maybe it's about 8 feet long. I have to see when I actually put this in, but it's about 8 feet long. And we want to use around a 22 gauge wire, and is it, or a 20 gauge wire. This is the reason for this. We want a little bit of resistance in this particular piece of wire. 20 gauge wire has about 10 milliohms per foot. And that's helpful. Then we go over to a diode. In this case, we're going to be using a shock key diode. It's a low voltage drop diode and about a 15 volt breakdown rating on that diode. That's important because the lower you get that, the lower the voltage drop is when it's conducting. And then we're going to go over to our auxiliary battery. That's pretty much it. So the diode we're using, this particular diode that I'm going to be using is a shocky barrier diode. And you can see it's a 15 volt diode. This one happens to be a dual diode. I just got that because it basically came for free. I'm going to put two diodes in parallel, but essentially it's one diode. It's in a TO220 
outline. TO stands for transistor outline package that looks like that. That's what we're using. And as you can see here, it's low voltage drop, which is key for what we're doing. Happens to be this particular part from on semiconductor. And I got that part from digikey.com. You can get it from a lot of different places, but I got it from DigiKey. They have a lot of uh, components. It's gonna the part itself is about two dollars, but you can shipping may be a little bit more. There's other diodes that you can use that are what they call actuated diodes. It'll basically look like a cylinder with two leads coming out. Um, that's possible too. But the key thing is a Shockey diode, relatively low voltage around 15 to 20 volts maybe and rel as, as much current capability as you can this happens to be 40 amp total for two diodes which is helpful because it has less voltage drop which is important but if you have a question about that just just uh, put a question in the uh, comments section we'll be happy to answer any questions about that so that's the, that's the basic circuit so what we're going to do here you see this piece of metal this piece of copper this copper is going to be used to mount the, the diode and also hold the wires. That's going to go right on to a uh, bolt here that's part of this terminal. I happen to have these particular terminals, so I'm using them. Most of the stuff I had laying around. That would go on like that. And then the diode itself is going to be mounted right here with a screw to make contact to the copper. And then we're going to solder that our wires to that. I'm actually using two 24 gauge wires in parallel. This happens to be higher temperature insulation wire which is desirable but not ne totally necessary. So I happen to have this particular wire and that's what I'm going to use for this application. Uh, what I did on this is I actually cut the center tab on this because you don't need it. Look at the schematic for this. It looks like that. And the center tab is actually the lead in the middle, which happens to be the cathode, and the tab. So we're going to the tab. I don't need that center, so I, I shut that off. And I'll, I'm going to solder my wires to this particular thing, which is located right here. So let's see how that goes. So I have my um, wires set up here and I have some heat shrink that I put on there just for good measure so I can do this so if you take a close look at this you can see kind of bent the, bent the leads together very carefully and I put the wires on there I'm going to solder this together now I drilled a hole for the battery terminal, a hole for the diode, and I put two holes I'm acting as that's we're gonna act as a strain relief for the wire. So we have our device, and we have a screw and a washer, and that's gonna go in here. It's gonna make contact with the copper. You could probably clean that if you want, I'm not bothering, probably should, but it's not a lot of current. Washer, lock washer, always important. Must have a washer and a lock washer for any kind of power connections. Just attach this. So now this happens to be a cap head screw. Okay. There we go. It's on there pretty good. Let me pull this down. I actually drilled these and I deburred the edges so it wouldn't be sharp. This is, happens to be super tough insulation. It's a different special kind of wire. If you're going to use, you can use any, there's a lot of different ways you can do this, but if you're using standard, standard gauge, standard insulation wire, you got to be a little more careful. This is actually Teflon, which is very strong. So what I'm going to do eventually is I'm just going to put this on here like this. Hopefully it fits. Goes with that screw. 
Well, anyway, I'm going to put a piece of insulation on there, and this is going to go on to the thing like that. With washer, lock washer. Very important. Don't forget it. And this will go on here like this. This will go on to the positive terminal of my battery. So it's just a little mounting mounting assembly. This is copper it happens to be about sixty thousandths thick. It was a piece I had laying around. Um, this will go over to our main battery, and this will be our charging circuit. So again, twenty gauge wire, maybe twenty two gauge wire, um, probably a ten amp fuse. The other part of this is the fuse holder. This will be the fuse which is going to connect to the main battery. So this is going to go to the main battery. I have this is this is its normal fuse that's in here. I'm using a 20 amp actually for my application. You can put a lug terminal on it like that. It's going to go onto the main battery, and then this will connect to this wire here once it's installed. And I'll show you. You know you'll see you saw the final installation. You will see the final installation. And that's pretty much it. So I'm going to try to test the system. Uh, so I, sh I showed you the schematic. We have a main battery, which is our battery that came with the truck. We have a fuse. We have some wire, which comes across here. Maybe six or eight feet, I don't know. It's about that much. It's got some resistance in it. Then we have a diode assembly and we got our auxiliary battery. So what we're going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to show you the main battery voltage. Hopefully you can see it's 12.6 volts and the auxiliary battery voltage was 12.49. Batteries tend to self-discharge with time so this battery has been sitting there for a while and it's a little lower voltage at 12.49 volts. The main battery is at 12.61 so if you look at a battery state of charge versus voltage we're about 12.4 on the auxiliary battery which is about 80% charge and the Main battery is between 90 and 100 percent charge, so that looks pretty good. We're ready to test it right now, and we're going to start the truck up. And you can see right now the charging current is zero. We're going to start the truck up. So the charging current goes up to about six amps, and it's dropping down as the battery's charging to more of like a trickle charge. You can see right here that the main battery voltage is about 15 or so, and auxiliary battery voltage is about 14.3. So as this charges up more and more, the auxiliary battery, this, this voltage will reach almost the float voltage for charging. And this current will drop down to more like a trickle charge, which is almost down to now. So the battery will just be maintained and being fully charged. So uh, that's pretty much it. The system seems to be working very, very well. So one more important thing about this particular system is that if you're going to jump start your battery, your main battery, I would recommend just attaching the negative terminal first and then the positive terminal back. Although this is a heavy cable. As soon as you connect this positive one to the positive one of your other battery, you're going to get current flowing back through this link. And this, this is heavy cable, but it's not super heavy cable. Um, so that's important. You don't want to put a really light cable on this unless you follow some procedures and do that first. Um, the other thing that's really important is if you're going to jump start another vehicle, don't use this battery. Use your main battery because if you jump start to here, to another vehicle you may pull excessive current and blow your fuse which wouldn't be that big a deal but um, if you want to use this battery you can take one of these off preferably this one take this off and then you can jump start another vehicle but use this for this vehicle only if you want to jump start another vehicle take this off disconnect the battery let it f and then you can use this battery to jump start another vehicle but I would recommend just using your main battery if you're going to jump start another vehicle. If you like this video and, it, and it's useful, um, please subscribe to our channel and there'll be more videos coming down the road. Also, if you're interested in the 
aspects of charging a lead acid battery and other batteries, I, I recommend you go to this website called batteryuniversity.com and there's a lot of discussion about batteries, what they do, how to charge them, what the float voltage has to be when you charge them, sulfation, sulfation of the battery, which is a bad thing. Uh, so it tells you all the do's and don'ts about battery charging. So again, please subscribe and thanks a lot for watching.